What's poppin' internet? Welcome to another episode of the Synced Up Podcast, a show where we talk about news, games, and sandwich a little fun in between. I'm one of your host, Timothy DeRoe, and joining me this week is your boy, Michael Claire. How you doing on this fine Sunday, Mike? I'm doing great. I didn't wake up till one today, you know? Why? I don't know. Did you go to bed late? No, went to bed on time. You were a 1 p.m.er today. Yeah, 1 p.m. I woke up. Shame. Well, it, it, you know, Adri's gone. There's no one in the room. No one was there waking like, up. Like, no shame if you worked the night shift and you, you, you got to sleep in. Yeah. But I know you went to bed at midnight. I just slept all the way through. Shame. Yeah. Uh, how do you do it? Yeah. Didn't wake up for a skill. I don't know. We had church. I was in a dream. Church started at 8.30. Mm-hmm. Woke up at 8.30. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that was... That's that was rough. rough. That's rough. Well, today we're going to talk about Nintendo Switch OLED model, the state of play, and Assassin's Creed Infinite. But before mm. we get into that, if you enjoy our show, you should consider supporting us on Patreon at patreon.com slash synced up, where for $1 a month, you can get access to our Discord, where we talk about a lot of things in there. We we rank the Disney movies. We talk about the Disney There's movies. A lot we play stuff. trivia. There was a lot of trivia going on today, so mm-hmm. that was happening. Or for $5, you can get access to post shows of both of our shows and many more goodies, all from youtube.com slash synced up podcast and podcasting services around the world. New episodes of this show go up in both of those feeds, Mondays, 7 a.m. Central, Central Time, Time Zone, Zone Gang. You can also write into the show through the Discord in the Reader Submissions channel or to SyncedUpPod at gmail.com with any questions, comments, and concerns, and we may read them on the show. Also, you should follow us on Twitter at SyncedUpPod to keep up to date with all of our content from across the board. Good now stuff. let's get into it. That was a clean housekeeping. Oh, yeah, it was I'm really impressed. good. I'm that was feeling, nice. I'm feeling good today. Nintendo Switch OLED model was <laughs> announced this week. I agree with Mike. This is from Nintendo.com. Meet the newest member of the Nintendo Switch family. The new system features a vibrant 7-inch OLED. L- oh, 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 no. You kill the housekeeping, and then you've completely ran out of gas, you know? Because the whole time I was saying this, I was like, oh, I'm going to kill the whole show this today. And I just should have. <laughs> yeah, it's because, I, you know, I need to stay focused on my crap. Stay in the flow state, you know? Yeah. Completely Three fucked minutes. Up. Let's run it back. Nintendo.com. Meet the newest member of the Nintendo Switch family. The new system features a vibrant 7-inch OLED screen, a wide adjustable stand, a dock with a wired LAN port, 64 gigabytes of internal storage, and enhanced audio. 7-inch OLED screen. Feast your eyes on vivid colors and crisp contrast when you play on the go. See mm-hmm. the difference the vibrant screen makes, whether you're racing at top speed or squaring off against enemies. Wide wow. adjustable stand. Flip out the sturdy stand for easy viewing in tabletop mode. Find your best angle. Adjust the stand to find the optimal viewing angle. Perfect for a quick multiplayer game with the buddy. buddy. Built-in wired LAN port. Connect online using the dock's LAN port when playing in TV mode. 64 gig- gigabytes of internal storage. Save games to your system with 64 gigabytes of internal storage. Enhanced audio. Enjoy enhanced audio from the system's onboard speakers. And the release date is October 8th, 2021 for a crisp 350 United States tender. So, man. Sad. <laughs> yeah. And okay, I well, said I've said it before. Nintendo's biggest enemy is our fans. Yeah, are the fans, of course, because we've reported on the Nintendo Switch Pro mm-hmm. at least four times. Yeah, now and now keep in mind, there's a lot of uh, rhetoric on the internet that is uh, condemning a lot of the journalists and stuff for reporting on this Nintendo Switch Pro. A lot of these journalists um, are still reporting that the Nintendo Switch Pro is coming just later next year, and so that's still um, still a thing there. But it is worth noting. I mean, it's not their fault they had the, they got info from reputable people and that info mm-hmm. just so happened uh to be incorrect yeah um well not maybe not completely incorrect but incorrect so the this 4k model and stuff that people are talking about apparently is still coming just next year mm-hmm. which would make sense with the way nintendo did the 3ds you know with the 3ds new 3ds xl 2ds 2ds yeah. xl dsi all that stuff uh the light versions of those things um, it would make perfect sense for them to do the same thing for the Switch. Um, the Switch has sold 85 million um, copies up to this point. Mm-hmm. You imagine when the OLED model drops, we're going to sell a lot more. Um, things like that. People getting this this child tax credit, the different uh, the different um, um, stimulus checks and stuff. When we come around next year to more sales numbers, it's going to be pretty high. I think the Switch has a good chance to be the highest selling console of all time. Do you think this upgrade is worth No. the extra 50? No. Well... Depending on where you're coming from. If you're talking about for me and you, I don't think oh, so. Oh, no. If you're talking about with someone who hasn't played, hasn't had a Nintendo Switch up until this point, I think, yes, it is. If you're someone who bought a Switch on day one and you play specifically, uh, predominantly portable mode, mm-hmm. maybe. Um, but if you are a guy who prefers the docked mode, you're someone who already has a Switch. Maybe you brought a Switch a year and a half ago. You didn't yeah. do a day one purchase. This doesn't make a ton of sense to me. But, um, you know, like my friend Ben, uh, he had a Switch since day one. He plays predominantly handheld mode because he has kids, um, so he wants to kind of do his own thing. He doesn't really play on the dock at all. 
Um, so this makes a lot of sense for him, in my personal opinion, um, because the OLED screen is going to be really nice. OLED is incredible, especially on TVs. It's probably going to look really nice. The extra 0.8 inches on the screen, um, that's that's a, a big difference in terms of handhelds that are that small. Yeah. Um, and and the, the enhanced audio on the thing, those are all um, enhancements that I think would make it worth it for him because he's in the market. He's, he's going to buy a new Switch. He's contemplating whether the Animal Crossing or the OLED. And I told him, you should just go for the OLED because I think um, the extra fifty dollars, with the fact that you play pretty much ninety nine point nine percent of the time in handheld, mm-hmm. it makes a lot more sense for you to go OLED um, on this one specifically. And so, I really think it just depends on where you're coming from, whether or not the three hundred fifty dollars is worth it yeah. for you and I. I think it's not. No, I, I have no intentions of replacing mine with this model. Yeah, no. Um, I don't if, think it's if mine busts. I'll get this one instead of a regular one, of mm-hmm. course. But see, yeah. I was thinking before we got the price number because we got the price number a little later. Yeah. Um. I was hoping it would be like they did when they upgraded the Switch the first time. Mm -hmm. Because there's two models of the Switch, the regular Switch right now. Yeah, the one with the extended battery life Mm -hmm. and the regular one. And the extended battery life one was just the new one that they just kept selling for $300. Um, This is almost like just so much of a a not a huge improvement that I think they should have just had this be the new Switch. Yeah, something like Um, that. I mean, there's a, enough Im- improvements here that I think it's worth making its own model. But yeah, I don't know. I, the I Nintendo know, Switch man. is too much like a console for for me to to see it like the DS. Mm-hmm. You know, you could come out with all those different versions of the DS, and it makes sense. So um, I don't know. The wired LAN port is a really nice thing. I should have been on the dock off the jump. Yeah. Um, the kickstand, it is a better kickstand. It's a lot wider, mm-hmm. which is which is cooler. Having extra 32 gigabytes of internal storage is also nice. But all of these just seem like things that could have been there. Um, to begin with, uh, aside they, from maybe the none of them screen. solve, in, in my opinion, problems that I have with the current model. Yeah, um, I need a, a pro model. I think yeah. the lights solve certain problems. Um, it's a more comfortable, easier to mm-hmm. go on the go. It's better for handheld. Um, but I don't think this one really does anything in the grand scheme of no. of anything. Um, whereas a, a pro model will bring us 4K, nicer looking games, make uh, Arceus run a lot better, make Breath of the Wild two be pretty badass. You know. Yeah. Um, I I just don't, I don't really see this being. Um, worth too too much especially when maybe you're someone who has an Xbox and a Switch and you're thinking about upgrading your Switch to this um, for 50 more dollars you can get a PS5 you know yeah for real or for 50 less dollars you can get if you haven't got into next gen yet for 50 less dollars you can get into next gen with the Xbox Series S mm-hmm. um, and so I don't know man <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's I, a hard I think, buy for me I think Nintendo needs to come out with the Pro Edition uh, sooner rather than later because I feel like competition is starting to catch up. Steam's got their... There, there's like a lot of different um, kind of Steam accessible yeah, st- uh, handheld stuff that's coming, coming out, out. Yeah, and It's just like, I, I feel like if... It's been... Nintendo yeah. could easily get lapped in yeah. this market it's, it's if been, they don't... It's been five years since the original Switch. Yeah. So, and that's a thing. And in five years, of the, the only progress we've made is... The light and this thing. Yeah. Which the light is cool, but I don't it know. is, it is. But like, we'll have to see if, if, if in time they end up doing the pro model, which, mm-hmm. which ev- the reports they seem sh- to point towards that they that they're doing that. Mm-hmm. So, but let's look at the future for Sony instead of Nintendo anymore. Every game featured at Sony's July 2021 State of Play. Sony's July 2021 State of Play live stream focused largely around third party games, but includes Death Stranding, Director's Cut, and Death Loop. This roundup is from Jason Rocklin at Game Rant. I thought this was a good showing personally. Yeah, so they stuff. started it off with Moss Book Two. Polyarch's Moss is a VR puzzle adventure game released in 2018 that caught many people's attentions thanks to its adorable protagonist, Quill, and storybook world. The newly revealed sequel, Moss Book 2, led off Sony's State of Play event. Book 2 promises to continue Quill's story as she explores the Hex Castle of Arcane and aims to stop a tyrannical ruler who wants to unmake the world according to a Polyarch press release. The trailer shows her taking to various environments and collecting new items to aid in this quest, including a large hammer. So Moss, I thought one was pretty cool. Um, yeah, this I isn't really Moss. a buy for us because we don't have a PSVR um, mm-hmm. anymore um, but I think Moss getting a sequel is, is really nice because Moss is a good game yeah I, I was excited for that one then they followed it with Arcade to get in developer Ilphonic is best known for its asymmetrical titles based on existing horror properties including Friday the 13th the game and Predator Hunting Grounds its next game a quote flashy multiplayer shooter end quote named Arcade get in is billed as a brand new IP it features alien looking characters battling solo or in co-op to take on hordes of enemies in a futuristic world with a 90s punk rock influence and looks stylistically similar to Valon Studios Knockout City the game is available in early access starting now I thought this looked cool actually I was kind of um, into this. I, yeah, I saw some stills for this one. It looks pretty neat. Yeah, watching the gameplay of this, um, there was a lot of melee combat, a lot of shooting combat. I, I thought it looked pretty good. Mm-hmm. 
How to get a sip? This next one, actually, I know we've seen this game um, a lot. This showing specifically of the game, a lot of people said um, that this this is gonna come up again later when I talk about uh, Death Loop. But a lot of people said that the showing of this game was pretty much the same, and they didn't need to see more of this game. Uh, this seemed all new to me, um, and I'll uh, I'll talk oh, about because it's all like post develop or like post game stuff, right? What do you mean? Um, no, well, there are updates just, like things that are coming in post launch. Yeah, That's but it, I mean. the game still isn't out yet. Yeah, yeah. So but they were discussing post launch. Um, stuff. This, all of this seemed new to me, even the gameplay and everything. So, um, and I'll bring that back up later. I'm burying the little little bit when when I discuss Death Loop. But Tribes of Midgard debuted during E3 2021 Summer Game Fest and will launch on PC, PS4, and PS5 later this month. The State of Play trailer discussed the free season updates that developer Norsefell is developing and details the classes, loot, and new boss coming with a quest line in Season One, The Wolf Saga, which will begin right at launch. So I haven't seen a ton of this game, but watching this uh, showing of the game, I actually kind of got a little bit of ex- a little bit excited for this. I'm kind of in to this mm-hmm. game. Um, I know I think this is there's a board game called Tribes of Midgard. The, uh, I don't know if it has anything to do with the board game because the, the title splash looks eerily similar to the cover of the board game. But um, I'm super into this this style game. They showed more of Fist Forged and Shadow Torch, a game I forgot about. If you remember, they sh- uh, this game was showed like two years ago. Really? Um, I mm-hmm. can't remember. I can't remember what it looked like at the time, but I do remember us laughing at the acronym when we were in our old apartment so but i know for that fact this has been showed before hmm. but fist forge and shadow torch fist forge and shadow torch is an action-packed metroidvania starring a burly rabbit in a suit that gives him massive fists which can transform into helicopter blades drills and more <laughs> received its september 7th 2021 release date for ps4 and ps5 during sony's state of play event the game looks packed with anthropomorphic characters all uh, of all ilk in a gritty 2d world and it can be pre-ordered now for exclusive bonus content Hunter's Arena Legends. Developed and published by Mantisco, Hunter's Arena Legends is a 30-player battle royale game focused around martial arts and swordplay as Hunters and Demons Clash, described as fighting game meets battle royale. However, the thing that stands out most about this trailer is it confirmed Hunter's Hunter's Arena Arena Legends will be a free PS Plus game for August 2021, available between August 3rd and September 6th. I might check this out because of that. It kind of looked a little bit cool. Um, We got another update on Sifu. For those looking forward to Sifu, the PlayStation exclusive and heavily stylized kung fu action game reminiscent of the John Wick film franchise, today's state of play came out uh, with some bad news. Sifu is being delayed from 2021 to early 2022, though no more distinct window is given. Luckily, the trailer should still provide a fix of action as the protagonist brawls his way through a neon-tinted club. Um, I, I'm, I'm still excited for that. I'm excited for Seafood. It looks yeah, really I think good. This I think next one, we finally got to see a little bit more of this game, and I'm actually really, really stoked for this game after this showing. Mm-hmm. Jet the Far Show- Shore. After being announced in June 2020, Super Brothers Jet the Far Shore was delayed last September. Its newest trailer debut during the July State of Play event does not confirm a release date more specific than 2021, but it offers interested players a lot of sweeping environmental shots to sink their teeth into. So they, they showed off a lot more um, of this game. Um, I know I'm on camera right now, but can you bring me my sweet tea? Please, God, thank you so much. Um, so we didn't get to see a ton of this game when we first seen it. Yeah. They, they, when they first showed it, they kind of said, hey, we're going to show more later, and they showed more of it. I'm really fucking excited for this game now. Um, it seems kind of like a little mix between um, Outer Wilds stylistically and No Man's Sky at the same time with a, with a lot more focus on exploration instead of resource gathering and combat yeah. and stuff. I'm really fucking into it. Apparently okay. the story is a really uh, big thing. The way they show the zooming out into the ship and then zooming into like walking around, I was like, "Oh, this is really cool." Um, the ship gameplay looks really nice. I'm I'm actually like stoked for this game now. Okay, I'm gonna have showing. to check this one out. I haven't, I didn't watch this live. I think that was kind of one of the ones I missed when I was looking over the tweets and stuff. Yeah, so I'll have to check that one out. Yeah, so I'm I'm actually thank you very much sponsored Sip. sponsored by McDonald's. Come on. I wish. Mm. I wish we had that McDonald's money. That's, that's, what is this? Oh, is this is just a straw from Kylie. <laughs> I was like, McDonald's got bendy straws now? Yeah, dude. It's, a, it's the upgrade. That's nice. Ooh, that's good. Yeah, so I'm actually really excited for this game okay. now, and I, I can't wait for it to come out. I shall so. check it out. Then they show Demon Slayer, the, Hinok- the Hinokami Chronicles. Demon Slayer is one of the most popular recent shonen manga, in part thanks to the state of its anime adaptation in 2019. Mm -hmm. And the movie, by the way. Video games were sure to follow with CyberConnect 2's Demon Slayer, the Hinokami Chronicles, coming out on October 15th, 2021, thanks to publisher Sega. Fans got a look at one of Demon Slayer's the Hinokami Chronicles Adventure Mode missions playing on, on PS5 in today's live stream, taking them through uh, Suzumi Mansion to hunt and kill demons as various characters. So I couldn't get a feel on this. I didn't know if this was a single-player linear game or a fighting game. I couldn't really tell. It's probably a single-player linear game. Yeah, it just... 
It also had those 3D arena fighting game style things, but they only showed you. But f- most, a lot of the, um, it might still have that and a story mode. Because, like, based off of what I remember of, like, um, Naruto, Ultimate Ninja Storm, and stuff like that. Yeah. They were fighting games. With the cool adventure but mode. But, the, yeah, the adventure mode was always cool. Yeah, because they say here that it was I think, the adventure mode. I think so. Kakarot's, like, the only one I can think of that was just, like, pure adventure mode. Yeah. Mode. I don't know. Then they showed off more of Lost Judgment, which used to just be called Judgment. It's a well, no, that's a complete cap. This is the sequel to Judgment, um, mm-hmm. Lost Judgment, a sequel to the Yakuza spinoff Judgment, released in 2018, was announced in May after a handful of leaks. It will be releasing this September for last and next gen consoles, and a new trailer provides a hearty look at various mechanics players can expect. The game is uh, chock full of hijinks that Yakuza fans will expect, from running along walls to playing dance, dance revolution style minigames, or attacking foes with a Sheba that growls like a lion. However, that all underpins more serious crime investigations and what seems like a perfect balancing act. So it seems more akin that uh, in this Judgment spinoff series, we're going to be going on the action style of mm-hmm. things with the mainline Yakuza sticking to that new turn-based system that was uh, brought yeah. forth in Yakuza Like a Dragon. So that's really cool. Then we got to see some more of uh, Death Stranding Director's Cut, which might I might end up getting because I never played the original Death Stranding. Mm-hmm. Um, and You, you know, should. You're a mailman. So I might end up getting. Uh, so Sony has announced both Ghost of Tsushima and Death Stranding will be receiving Director's Cut releases on PlayStation 5, and the latter was giving a full showcase for why it's the definitive experience with a new trailer. Beyond showing cutscenes remastered for the next-gen console, the trailer confirms that Kojima Productions is adding new battles, combat mechanics, story missions, a firing range to practice gunplay, and much more. Overall, it makes a good case for why players would want to jump into Hideo Kojima's first solo project since leaving Konami all over again. Then we got to see a nine-minute deep dive uh, onto Deathloop. And uh, what I was talking about with the Tribes of Midgard thing, um, at first I was uh, thinking more that I that more showings of Deathloop is kind of redundant at this point and is kind of taking away from the game uh, originally, in my opinion, mm-hmm. because I was like, man, dude, I've seen so much of this game. You're kind of just spoiling the game. I don't want to see any more of this. But then I started thinking about the... Um, the way I was thinking about this uh, Tribes of Midgard thing, where how they've showed so much of Tribes of Midgard, yet how tuned in I am, I missed it. And for a lot of people, they were like, man, we've seen so much of this game, I don't want to see anymore. But for me, it was like new. And so I kind of changed my mind on that, uh, on this death loop showing, because Cause it could be new to somebody. Somebody out there. Um, so at first, I was kind of like, man, I can't believe we got to see another nine minutes of death loop. But then I was like, you know, well, I, they, I, I they showed off. off some new things, right? Like, so from what I heard, you can get invaded by. Yeah this other that wasn't new well no but it's in it's kind of like how someone compared it to dark souls yeah that's not new okay yeah. well i didn't know that yeah so therefore there's your example yeah N-word. exactly i didn't know that yeah so for for me this showing would just be spoiling aspects of the game because i yeah. know everything there is to know that i want to know about death loop at this point um, but yeah for like a lot of people um mm. the, you know video game marketing a lot of people haven't seen stuff so i think september 14th is the release date or september 9th mm-hmm. um is the release date for um for death loop so get get excited for that i know i'm, I'm excited for it and i can't yeah. wait to play it it looks more and more like dishonored as time time goes on but um this is a f- this next future i'm a little more wary about i don't know if i'm wait, excited wait. for about it, uh excited for it um <laughs> sorry <laughs> you had a okay. laugh at me you had a, are you good <laughs> were you laughing at me or me the way i said where i was laughing at oh. where we where we um some people think this is the future when you look up articles for this Assassin's oh, Creed Infinite. I hope not. Infinity. A, lo- a lot of places, Polygon, um, a lot of places like that are saying that this is the way that this stuff should go. I'm not sure about it. But Ubisoft plans Assassin's Creed Live online game service. The Assassin's Creed Infinity, Pro- Infinity Project seeks to emulate the prolonged financial success of GTA V or Fortnite. This is by Jason Schreier at Bloomberg. Assassin's Creed, a video game franchise set in huge worlds where each one can take hundreds of hours to complete, is getting even bigger. A new project, which is known inside Ubisoft Entertainment uh, SA by the codename Assassin's Creed Infinity, sets out to create a massive online platform that evolves over time, according to people familiar with its development. By the way, this has been officially confirmed by Ubisoft at this point. Mm. They didn't say anything more than what Jason had already said, so that's why I shared his instead of theirs. Whereas previous Assassin's Creed games each unfolded in specific historical settings, such as ancient Greece or... Uh, who? Egypt. Egypt, Infinity will contain multiple settings with room to expand to others in the months and years following its debut, said the people who asked not to be identified discussing a project under development. Individual games on the platform might look and feel different, but they will all be connected. Details surrounding the project, which hasn't been previously reported, are in flux, and it's still years away from release. The teams have also been affected by the hashtag MeToo allegations that have swept through the company over the last year. 
A spokeswoman for Ubisoft declined to, dis to discuss Infinity in detail, but acknowledged its existence. Ubisoft aims to exceed the expectations of fans who have been asking, asking for a more cohesive approach to the series, the spokeswoman said. As for sexual misconduct claims, she said Ubisoft had investigated every allegation and took appropriate actions. Development of an Assassin's Creed game typically involves thousands of employees across a dozen Ubisoft offices led by teams in Montreal or Quebec City that alternate duties. The Montreal team helmed last year's Assassin's Creed Valhalla, while Quebec ran the previous game, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. For Assassin's Creed Infinity, this tradition will also change. In April, Ubisoft unified the Montreal and Quebec teams. Now they will collaborate on Infinity, and each will have its own creative director, but Quebec will take charge of the franchise. There has long been a rivalry, rivalry between the two stu studios that has at times turned acrimonious, according to people familiar with the matter, so this shift may cause some headaches. The organizational change is designed to help the franchise evolve in a more integrated and collaborative manner that's less centered on studios and more focused on talent and leadership, no matter where they are within Ubisoft, the spokeswoman said. So, I even after Ubisoft's confirmation and press release on it didn't say much more than this. I'm still confused as to what actually this is. So I'm low key kind of excited because I I just want to know also what worried what you could possibly do with this gets me excited. Well, because they say these new games are all going to look and feel different, but they're connected. But is that not already what we're doing? Yes, but is that not already what's happening? But like. I don't know. Because if these games start like, making Fortnite money. Yeah. Well, they're not going to make Fortnite money. That's I'm sorry. <laughs> let's, let's go full stop. No, nothing is making Fortnite money for Rocket a Rocket League time. money? Maybe Rocket League money. Okay. <laughs> Maybe. But, like, I, I don't know. I feel like you could do some really cool things where, like, this stuff in the real world starts to matter. Yeah. Because you're actively, if, like... But it does if you're, like, into it. Like, if you're something like Chance, that real world stuff matters to him. Yeah. But, I, but to be able to connect it more... In, through one game so imagine like you're in the real world and you're like all right i have to go to the valhalla world yeah to come figure this stuff out and then oh this leads me to a clue yeah. in another world okay and all of a sudden you're going through multiple worlds so in one game i've seen a couple of comparisons a couple of things online a couple of my own theories as to what this could possibly be there's a couple of options here um do we do the destiny approach where there is destiny and then there's taken king and then there's forsaken and then and then that's what this is probably maybe with different art styles and stuff I don't think so. Um, do we do the Battlefield approach where Battlefield, you know, Battlefield at each individual games, but when you go into those menus, all of those games are in one menu if you have them assigned, if you have them downloaded, if you go to mm -hmm. the left. Like you, I don't know if you've ever seen it when we played Battlefield, but you click to the left, Battlefield Hardline, Battlefield 1, Battlefield 5, all of those are in one menu, and you can mm -hmm. click, click each individual one and load into each game. No, Maybe. I don't think it's that. Or is this a game where it's it's Assassin's Creed Infinity, you download that, and it's kind of like the Destiny model, but different where, yeah, like you were saying, you're in the real world, and you the Animus has received an update, and that mm -hmm. update is Odyssey. Uh, the Animus has received an update, and that update is Valhalla. You yeah. know, n not past games, but future games. You know, like mm -hmm. it's Assassin's Creed Japan, right? And that's the update in the Animus, and that's the whole thing that they're going to be doing for the next six months or to a year, whereas a year later we're going to be jumping into a new thing. I, yeah, I think it's more like the Destiny approach. Um, but it's just this talk of, like, the games are going to feel and look different. So are you saying, like, it's like the Destiny approach, but, like, some maybe the combat's going to be a little bit different. Maybe like I'm I not think quite the sure more what's complicated here. mechanics of the game aren't going to be as present. You, you know what I'm saying? Where, like, you have this evolving skill tree for, yeah. for your Valhalla. character. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think that's going to be there. It might be simplified into, like... Yeah, but but they talk, they they keep reiterating this fact that the the games individually are going to be different. So, like, me, I don't know. I, 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 I don't understand what this is. I need to know what this is. You got to show me I, something. I care. Um, so my hope is that like when I do something in one um place, it'll have some impact on me when I go to another place. Not historically, but like as me the person going into the animus mm -hmm. so if i complete japan mm -hmm. and i learn to fight as like a shogun or something then you come back to real world i can go to valhalla Infinity. well I, yeah i can go to the real world or i can go to valhalla and use and start fighting skills. like a shogun mm. that would be cool like stuff like that like I, that's where i'm like there could be cool stuff that could be done here yeah the only way i can see this done narratively is that there's the future thing is blown up a lot mm -hmm. and there's a lot of shit there's like an open world in the future area and yeah. there's shit you could do in the future area and then you, the, the big portion of going to the future area is hooking up to your animus and going to the historical things. It's yeah. the only way I could see this. Um, 
which for me personally, this, that isn't a negative, but for me personally, I don't give a shit about the future stuff. Yeah. So that would be a major downfall for me. But I think for the, the I don't Assassin's know. I Creed think that's how they get you to care about it. I think as the Assassin's Creed franchise as a whole, for people like mm. Chance, and maybe even for me, they get me to care about it. Like you said, I think that matters. Because like in so. Valhalla, it feels so. I hate it. I uh, just immediately fourth fiddle to like, everything else that's going yeah. on. Walked forward. I was like, oh, 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 I can go right back in the yeah. Amos. Well, send me right the fuck back in because yeah. I don't care about any of this. Because so. in the first couple. Um, it was definitely way more important. I feel like to the story they were trying to tell. Yeah. Um, like it, like the reason you were there was specifically so you could do stuff in the real world, which that is the case in the new ones. But it's like that's not what you're as interested in. Yeah. While as in, I don't know. I I feel like that's this might be a push to get the people to care about more <clears throat> about the actual like current world. Yeah, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. There is a little more stuff looking forward to in the future. This is the future episode. The Witcher is getting a next-gen update. This is from the Witcher Twitter itself. They said, Deja Vu. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt next-gen update is coming to PS5, Xbox Series X, and S, and PC this year. Now, the reason I included this, because I don't normally just include next-gen updates in the news, is because some of this next stuff. Uh, here's a sneak peek of our updated cover art. They show the cover art. It looks really cool. Um, and then, spoiler alert, we also prepared some free DLCs inspired by the Witcher Netflix show. More info coming soon. And before you ask, the, the next-gen update will be free for everyone who already owns the game. The DLCs are not exclusive to the next-gen version. They will be available for every version of the game, including PS4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch. Nice. Um, but yeah, I included this in here because you're going to get DLC um, for the Witcher Netflix show, which is cool, actually. Especially yeah. because the Witcher Netflix show, com Season 2, is coming out this well, year. When did this game come out? 20, uh, 2014? 2013? And they're still getting DLC. That's crazy. Well, not... Hmm. I mean... Relative to what else is getting DLC these days? Yeah, hold up. Let's let's see. Let's not the itcher, the witcher. The itcher. <laughs> <laughs> the, <laughs> the Witcher Three Wild Hunt came out in 2015. Okay, uh, six years. Wait. Yeah, six. Okay, I really had to stop and think if six it was six and a half. What year is so it? That's cool. Huh? It's, it's 2021, dog. Well, okay, you wrote 2021 on these. So oh, it kind of messed me up. Those, yeah, those came out. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> wait, you I was tripping for a second. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Okay. Don't worry about it. Wow. All right, that was the news. This next section of the podcast. The following the news. Following right the news. Immediately. Called This Week in Gaming is it's the section about, of the podcast where we go through the historical releases. And you guessed, you guessed it, it. This Week in this Gaming. This Week in Gaming. So July 11th, there wasn't anything of note. Really? Nothing. July Sad. 12th, Pokemon Box, Ruby and Sapphire for what the game. What does that mean? Pokemon Box. Uh, Ruby and Sapphire for the GameCube in 2004 was a game that you bought for the GameCube that was just added storage for Ruby and Sapphire on the Game Boy. So you would store your Pokemon. Did you have to look this on, up? After? I did because I was like, oh. what the fuck? And so, yeah, it's just a game, a full game that you bought at full price for the GameCube that was just the PC. It didn't even let you run the game. No, on the you just stored your Pokemon in there, man. <laughs> I mean, Pokemon has that always had a model Pokemon like that. Home. But. That was before Pokemon Home and stuff. And if you were a Pokemon, buy Ruby and Sapphire. Maybe like you have a fucking mm -hmm. Pokemon. You don't got any more box storage. Yeah. Buy Pokemon Box. For that's, your kind of, that's kind of crazy. That's so weird, dude. I was like, oh, I'm, I'm including this for the fun facts. I wonder that's if weird. Mike knows. So, no. so you never played Pokemon new. Box. Ruby no, I got to go back. Never did? Yeah. So July 13th, uh, three years ago, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker in 2018. It's been three years since Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. What I a played, good game, though. I played the demo. Yeah, it's a fun game. It's fun. It was good. Game. July 14th, nothing of note. July 15th, RimWorld dropped the 2016. Five years ago. Really good uh, uh, PC game. I liked it. What? What? Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a oh, bad week. Yeah. It's a bad week. But Whoa. this one for Mike here, July well, 16th, Doken Battle in, <laughs> Hello. in 2015. Uh, six year anniversary currently going on in Doken. Almost thought about redownloading. They got Mo Mastered Ultra Instinct, got UI you. Goku, LI Int. And then, on the other hand, you have Super Saiyan Blue Evolved Vegeta, who looks good as hell. They almost got you. And then bro. you got the subunits. You got Golden Frieza with Gohan. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Or Gohan with Piccolo. Uh huh. Very good. Almost <laughs> redownloaded. <laughs> but I didn't do it. You didn't do it. I stayed true to and myself. And then July 17th, it's been a full year since Ghost of Tsushima and Paper Mario Origami King came out. A full year. We played uh, both of those. Yep. But we didn't play the same one those nope. days. No, we didn't. I but played Paper I, Mario. Um, I, I kind of want to get Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut just because of how pretty. Well, I don't have the cash, but if I ever got the cash. <laughs> if I ever get the money. Because of how pretty that game was on PS4, I'm kind of ecstatic to see what it looks like in 4K on the PS5. I think okay. it'll look really good. Uh, when you do, I want to watch it. I want to see uh, how yeah, it looks. If I ever do. Now it's time for Game Pass Club. Woo! It's your boy. 
Game Pass Club. What game are we talking about? Today, we're going to be talking about Bug Fables. Bug Fables. week of Game Pass Club. This is the new segment that we started last week, if you missed it, where we pick a Game Pass game. Well, we pick four or five Game Pass games. We post them in the Discord. We have the community vote on which one they want to play through. And then depending how long the game is, we pick a certain amount of weeks that we're going to play through it and we're going to spoil and talk about the sections that we play through. Um, if we ever pick a multiplayer game like Sea of Thieves or something like that, we might do it for one week and just talk about it. There's not really yeah, spoilers yeah. you can do there. But, well, I guess you could with the new Pirate's Life stuff. But, um, so, that's what we're going to do. And this week is the first two chapters of Bug Fables. So, if you want to play and haven't, are we we're talking spoilers for the first two chapters, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's keep ahead. Or frankly, I don't think it's not that big of a deal. I don't think it's that big. But of a deal. if you're really concerned, I don't think you should be concerned. Personally, but hey, it's up to you. It's up to you. Um, so let's uh let's let's talk about book fables. The first two chapters. First, we'll talk about Chance's thoughts. He was the yeah, only one who, who wrote in with his, um, his thoughts. Let me let me double check he's in the been, Discord he's been to see if anyone got any late thoughts in besides Chance and uh, and I missed it. Um, no, just Chance. So Chance writes in, just got to tap chapter three, really enjoying it, giving me the Paper Mario vibes that I was promised. True. The music is bumping, specifically the battle music. Mostly and true. And the three protagonists are great. True. I love the banter between Kabu and V. True. And I think the battle systems is a little bland as of right now. Maybe it's because mm. I'm not playing on hard mode, but I feel like the powers yes. aren't a necessity in battles, and I'm just using your basic moves. Yeah, Even on 100%. bosses, you will easily get... Uh, you will easily get you... A, Even on bosses... Okay, whoosh. Okay, the powers aren't a necessity in battles and just using your basic moves, even on bosses, will easily get you a win. So you wrote that correctly, Chance. I'm just a fucking idiot. Hopefully True. the battles get hard. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully the battles get harder and using the powers is actually something that I need to do. I'm sorry. Uh, I no, agree with he, most of these. I disagree, and I, it's completely because I'm playing on hard mode. Mm-hmm. Where I think I'm actually like having to think and like plan out my battle. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I, I think I might throw on hard mode because I think it's worth it. The only battles that I'm enjoying are the boss battles. Yeah. Those are the only battles that I'm enjoying. Cause I'm like, Oh, this guy went down or this guy's getting close to going down mm. and Oh, I can, let me, let me use V's a couple of moves and then I'll switch over to leaf and use his freeze move. Cause I don't want to freeze him and then hit him mm-hmm. because I don't want him to be unfrozen. Yeah. Um, or let me put this person to sleep. And I'm like actually using my items on the boss. And battles. I'm not, I'm not doing that every battle since I'm on hard mode. I'm yeah. still like doing the, I'm going to hit him, do the freeze afterwards. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm still doing that stuff. Boss battles. Yeah. Dude, I'm thinking. Yeah. I'm, I'm spying, looking at how much health he has. Well, I spy every time because I just want to fill out the log. But I know, I know it cost me a turn, so I'm probably going to die. <laughs> but if you retry, it stays. Okay, okay. okay. So it's it's pretty vital. Um, yeah, the hard, I think the hard badge definitely ups the ante enough to where it's fun. Yeah. But uh, a little difficult, and I have to think. Yeah, because I'm agreeing. I, I think the, the battle... Stuff is a little bland, but the boss battles, I think, are, are enjoyable. And mm-hmm. once you start unlocking, I've started getting to the point where I just use those skills even in the regular battles because it just feels more fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, and also, I enjoy the way you don't just use the move and sit there. I like, you know, having to hold down or when yeah. you use, when you use like, um, the icicle coffin thing and you, you got to, you do the timing thing and then it pops up a three step quick time event. You got to bust yeah. that in. Or when you're doing the hurricane move and you got to tap left and right as fast as possible. Like I've, I've been enjoying that stuff. I think it's, I think mm-hmm. it's really fun. Um, I think the, the narrative is probably the highest point at this point during the first chapter. I was like, dude, I don't know if I can do this. Cause I was like, I'm so bored. Like I yeah. didn't think I could do it. And once I finished chapter one and I got about halfway through chapter two, I was like, okay, like I'm you, actually going to start asking more. some questions. Yeah. And then you like, you get a couple of narrative drips that you're like, Hmm, okay. Mm-hmm. I wonder where this is going. And I started enjoying it a little bit more. All right. Before we go on too far, I have, I broke my notes down into chapters. Okay. So I'll hit my chapter one. one okay. Notes first. I said, it gives me Pokemon mystery dungeon vibes. Never played um, those, I couldn't tell you. Simply because of the whole premise of like, this person wants to be an adventurer, and I also want to be an adventurer. So we have to team up, and now we're adventuring together. Yeah. And we're gonna go in this dungeon, and it's just very like Pokemon MD, but yeah. also very Paper Mario. Yeah. Um, I said the music's nice so far. Cutesy story. I did like the, I did like the music. Um, the spider. The first time was stupid easy. Mm-hmm. He did no damage to me. He would like go on his web. Mm-hmm. I'd knock it down, hit him, and he would just go back up. No, oh, okay. And uh, so that was easy. That was the when you're trying to free leaf. Mm-hmm. Um, I was getting smacked by regular enemies though. Yeah. Um, then I asked the question, 
because I want to make sure I had this. Are you playing with hard metal? And I think it's way more um, influential than I thought it was yeah. based on, on how it affects the gameplay. The combat is simple enough um, in itself, but once you get to those harder boss battles, I'm like planning like, okay, is it really worth me? Uh, is it better for me to attack with V here or to attack with Kabu, even though I'm going to take a damage reduction and use him instead so, so i can do this combo instead or something like that yeah. and i'm actually thinking i'm like who's gonna who should use the item here um who should what ability should i use at win times and mm-hmm. stuff like that there's a lot more complicated stuff. Isn't, isn't it like whoever attacks first does the more damage and then like whoever attacks second and then not does necessarily less it's if you go back to that person like if you're like i don't want to attack with this person i'm going to give their move to oh, someone yeah, else yeah, then, they hit, then they it's hit. reduced damage yeah you're right you're right um because there's like a lot of uh, like a lot of uh, intricate things that I think wouldn't affect unless you're in hard mode. Like whoever's standing in the front is going to get targeted more mm-hmm. and shit like that. Yeah, I'm doing that. I have like a back. And stuff. I have a metal that makes it to where you take less damage if you're standing in the back. Mm-hmm. So I put someone with low health in the back. Um, how did you build your rank up rewards? I know Chance said he wasn't really doing medals. I just didn't did, feel like he needed it. I don't know what rank I am now, but I think I've done TP once and I've done health twice and medals twice. I okay. Think. I've done it's mostly health for me because I felt like I felt like that was the biggest part mm-hmm. and then now it's been TP because I've some of those moves are really helpful mm-hmm. in those harder boss fights um, second spider fight whooped my ass uh, I was so close to dying but we won that one uh, the queen definitely evil yeah she got some she oh, 100%. There's, a, there's some weird shit going and on and at this me. point I'm asking uh, what the hell is that relief yeah is it because he says we a lot he does say we a lot I really thought it was too ants or something like stacked on top of each other yeah with the cloak yeah no <laughs> I, I think, think so. i think he's just got personalities he's so. just weird he's weird and mm-hmm. he, he keeps talking about how he he went into the cave like decades ago yeah and came yeah so it's like a whole thing any other notes on chapter one all right no, no, i'm really, just gonna, I'm, i really on, got I'll, chapter one i think chapter one was a little uh, slow. Slow, yeah, slow yeah just yeah. kind of introductory chapter two is a lot better plus now, i just like the environment in chapter two important question did you buy the plushie yeah okay I mean, have yeah. you found a use for it no I don't know what you're supposed to do. But I bought it, though. When you get to the crank holes, uh-huh. I tried it. Really? Yeah, I was like, too. maybe. Yeah, me too. <laughs> um, I even I, tried it on the door, the locked door. I tried it every, <laughs> every chance I could, I tried it. Uh, I found out I'm terrible at blocking. Absolutely terrible. No, I'm pretty good at blocking. I get I that just, awesome I can't, one for zero damage all the time. N- like, never, dude. I get that shit all the time. I can't get it. I'm terrible. Um, There's only certain enemies where I can't. The little seedling dudes, because of the, their little hesitation where they run up and then they jump back and then they yeah. go for it. I there's a lot of... He- there's. That they do it on purpose. Yeah. They, they were but trying to There's a bunch up. of things that I can block um, easily. Before you upgrade the boomerang, there was a thing, a spot where you could use the upgrade boomerang. Yeah. And I spent like five minutes, Me too, 10 you, minutes at trying the windmill? to... Yeah, because yeah, you're dude, like, I was, how do I throw I was it? I blasting that. And if you go stand forward and to the left at that mm-hmm. rock, and then you can make it go a lot faster and by yeah. throwing it to the right. But you had to like try and jump and back so on. Like, and I was like throwing it like, come on, 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 come on. And yeah, no, no, it was working. It's, yeah, I'm glad I wasn't the only one. Um, The puzzles in the chapter two area were pretty nice. I felt like they were good. That's also where I found out that that the 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 kabu can hit this windmill as well the little spin things really? I didn't the know. little spin things but it goes so much slower so when mm-hmm. that original that original crank that you go on where you were sitting there where it where the 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 ones go like this there's uh-huh. two of them in the platforms i was like dude how am i this is taking so long and then when i would jump across to go to the next one like it just wasn't working i was like yeah. dude i can't even do it like fast enough it's not possible and then i threw the boomerang at it and i was like dude it makes it go like 10 times as fast. Yep. That's ridiculous. Um, I realized, though, I had a text glitch because I got to an area where I had no idea how to pass. Mm-hmm. And then I went and watched um, some gameplay. Yeah. And there was a text that I didn't get. But it was when you have to freeze the ice and yeah. put it on the spikes. Yeah. And then use the... Because uh, I didn't realize that you could freeze enemies. Oh, you didn't know that? Yeah, in the overworld. Um, but there's a text thing where it's like... Hey, we could probably get across if we freeze them. Oh yeah, and I didn't get that. I at didn't get all. that either, but I knew you could freeze enemies. I forgot because when you're I know in the you're cave, introduced to it, but yeah. I, then I completely forgot by oh, that God, point. I was freeze these little flying dudes. So it was like five minutes of me like just walking around. Um, the boss battle with the two bugs, the singing bug and the mm-hmm. ant, ridiculously hard. Was it? Really? Um, wasn't for me. I I kept putting the lady to sleep with the with the, all those darts you kept picking up. Oh, I didn't have darts. The little sleepy darts. Yeah, I didn't have. Did I have like six of them? Do you so, chop the grass? 
Yeah, I do every time. Yeah, I was getting a bunch of darts. No, I wasn't getting darts. No, I had, I had some darts. crunchy leaves. And then when when you would kill enemies, they drop stuff. I they dropped a bunch of darts. I had like six darts, so I'd, I would just put her to sleep until I killed him. I had one dart used on a boss. Didn't do anything. Didn't use well, the darts. Well, no, I would put her to sleep immediately. She'd sleep for two turns. Wow. And then I beat on him. And then once he's dead, the only move she does is revive him. Yeah. And then so you kill him you on like the first two him. people, and then do more damage with him. Yeah. And then she's just like, oh, revive, and then you kill him, and then do damage so with her, and then that's what I did. I died three times to this boss fight. Gosh dang. Uh, that dude hits hard. That he does. Yeah. And so my problem was, I was like, I can kill her easily because mm-hmm. she can revive. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'll kill her first. That was the wrong move. You got to kill the guy first. Mm-hmm. Um, so eventually I kill him first, and then she revives. But it takes all three of my guys to kill him. Yeah. And so I had to kill him three times till she used another move. Different move. Okay. And then I could finally start wailing on her, and uh-huh. she like stopped reviving him completely, and I yeah. finally won that fight. That one was hard. That was when I was like, oh. I need items. I yeah. need to plan this out. Got to go buy some shit. The next boss, the sunflower, was even harder. The sunflower, um, I like. That was my favorite boss fight up to this point. Was that yeah. sunflower boss fight? That's why I was talking about how I started to feel a little bit better in the combat. Um, I, I like, I like that boss fight a lot. There was a lot. Yeah, more, that's the like, same. Strategy. Now, that's the same. Him in the air twice using the hard nuts to throw at him to knock him down. Yeah. And so and that, that this is that. that this is where I kind of hit that point too because it I said it was even harder. I had to turn around and I mm-hmm. went and leveled up one more time, mm-hmm. and then I brought some more items. Um, and then I said the combat seems simple, but it's really got some depth um, based on whose moves you use first and how you decide you use mm-hmm. your moves. Because when he's in the air, if you use um, V's like boomerang spinning move mm-hmm. while he's up there, you deal like eight damage yeah. instead of any other move. Yeah. So. Like those are things I learned after fighting him multiple times. Yeah, and I was like, okay, here's the best advantage there's I could do. Yeah, there's like weaknesses and weird mm-hmm. shit. There's weird interactions. Yeah, uh, did you did you realize that? I don't know. Maybe it wasn't by the time you did it. Completing chapter two is a rare achievement. Yeah, yeah. Seven percent, seven percent of people have completed chapter. Make two. it that far, and then I got rare achievements for beating him. You beat when you beat the bosses on hard with the hard metal on. Mm-hmm. You get another achievement. Oh, okay, okay. So uh, those achievements are rare. Damn. Um. And then at that point, I was like kind of interested in Leaf Story. So that's kind of all the notes I had. Yeah. I'm enjoying it. I think it's a good yeah, I game. Yeah, I think it's fun. I think uh, the next couple chapters are going to be a lot longer. Yeah. Based off of my understanding of the runtime of the game. Because mm-hmm. uh, time wise, I think we're about like 10, 15% through. Yeah. Um, but we have three more weeks of it. So. Yeah. We, so there are seven chapters in the game. Um, that's, all, that's all I have to say uh, about the game. Uh, this week we're going to be playing through chapter three and chapter four. So mm-hmm. not when you get the end of chapter four thing, but when you the get to chapter the, five the splash of chapter five, that's where we're going to stop completely. Mm-hmm. Um, do any of the side stuff, any of the overworld stuff, any of that stuff up until that specific point, And then um, we'll be done. So chapter three and four we'll be talking about next week. Um, and that's, that's it. All right. That's it for the, that's for the all Game I've, Pass that's Club. That's all I've been playing, too, Yeah, is that in League. So. I don't really have any uh, any what you've been playing stuff. Just been playing Bug Fables. Um, Bug time, Fables and Press League. for time now. We got the, and we're got we re-watching the, the Disney movies, and we're still trying to keep up with mm-hmm. these shows coming out every week, and we watch Black Widow and all kinds of stuff. So yeah. not a ton of time. It's been it was a busy a week. Shit, so um, that is, that, that's it for, for the what you've been playing and for the Game Pass Club. Uh, now it's time for reader mail. We got a couple of reader mail items here. You can yes, get your sir. questions right on the show by writing into synceduppod at gmail.com, just like Fielding did. He said, Hey, brothers, in Hello. which game have you spent the most in microtransactions? Dokin. Do you have a ballpark estimate in total amount spent? Mine would be tied with Modern Warfare and Rocket League at about $15 being spent in each game. <laughs> the craziest I've heard was a friend of mine who would spend $80 to $100 a month in Pokemon Go. Keep it rolling, Fielding, the turtle, Dahmer. So, Dokin? Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's easy got to be Dokken. I've dropped probably. How do you? <laughs> why, why do you say that? Like yes. Uh, <laughs> huh? How how do you know? Oh, how have I? How how would they know? How would you know? Okay, yeah, Dokken for sure. Probably a couple hundred. Yeah. Jeez. Um, but that's like over like three years. Yeah. Same with me. Like Magic Arena, I've spent over a hundred bucks. Easy. Well, no, this is only micro. Yo, what do you think those are? Yeah. I thought you were talking about, like, actual magic cards. No. No, he's talking about Magic Arena. Magic Arena. Magic cool. Arena. Yeah. Um, over 100 bucks um, I've easily. probably spent, like, 80 to 100 total a- in Pokemon Apex, Go. Apex, I've probably spent about 40. Fortnite, I've spent about 40 to 60. Battle Passes add up. Um, battle Passes do add up. Um, League is probably at, like, 50. I spent a couple hundred in Apex. When I play any, like, these free games or these online games, I generally will spend, like, 10, 15 bucks. Yeah, it doesn't bucks. bother me. Because it's, it's a free game. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. And, and so, like, I'll, I'm playing I'll, it for free. Might I'll, as well. I've spent, you know, microtransactions on Destiny. You know, I've spent money on Assassin's Creed microtransactions. Like, I've I've spent a lot of money on, yeah. on microtransactions hey, in good, general. Also, good callback to the turtle. 
Yeah. What an introduction of feeling that yeah, was. Yeah, the turtle. Yeah. And he did it. He did do it. Uh, he won with that, time. that class. Wow, crazy. Um, but, yeah, I, I think I don't know what I would have spent the most in in microtransactions. Mm. Probably Magic Arena, I think. Not a bad choice. And like 150, 160 or something like that. I mean, I spent a lot on like Clash Royale and Clash of Clans back in the day, but that was before I had like a ton of disposable income, so I don't so think it I would have been too much. Spent that much, yeah. I'm not sure. That's about it. There was one time I turned a Subway gift card into Riot Points. <laughs> Hell the yeah. League. That was like that's a, seven years ago. That's called a, that's called a trade up, baby. Mm-hmm. And Spencer writes in with what video game has the best named levels? Halo. Halo. And it's Halo. Yeah. This was the conversation we were having in in the uh, Discord. Really the only one I can think. And of I that could not think of anything else. But like, let's look at these Halo One levels, dude. Like Halo. <laughs> like, listen to these yeah, fucking sure level names, bro. Halo Reach, bro. Combat Evolved Anniversary. Um, Pillar of Autumn. Like, Autumn. Come on, come on. Pillar of Autumn, Truth and Reconciliation, oh, dub. The Silent Cartographer, dub. Like, come on, dude. The Library, so like, I think, I think the Halo has the best name levels just in general. Yeah, um, the whole franchise. I don't even know who comes close. They start to get a little weak towards the back end. They start getting like basic. Mm-hmm. Let's go to Halo Pedia. Pedia. Pillar of Autumn, Long Silent Night Cartographer. Of Solace, bro. Come on. Yeah, the Heretic. Um, the Arbiter, such a good level too. Um, but they st- high tra- charity, the Great Journey. But once you start to get in like Halo Three and later, they start getting as like cool. You just get Floodgate, Epilogue, Cortana, Alpha Base, Lame, Relic yeah. Interior. So early Halo for sure. Yeah, early Halo, Dawn, Requiem, Forerunner, Infinity, Reclaimer, Shutdown, Composer, Midnight. Those are all Halo Four levels. Like you, s- you start to get. Kind of basic in the, in the later ones. Halo 5 Guardians is the same way. Enemy Limes, Before the Storm. Halo, I think it's just Halo 1 has the best name levels of just anything. Because mm-hmm. I can't think of any, like I can't think of level names of just any other game, just in general. But yeah. I can for, for Combat Evolve. Like, let me look up like best COD level names. Because that's the only other game that I can think of that has names pop up at mm-hmm. the beginning. Um... At the beginning of the thing. Man, it's not going to... Here we go. Let's go with the... Let me just look up, like, Call of Duty levels. Can I get, like, a list? Can I get, like, a list? Oh, right, here we go. No, that's Call of Duty Season 1. No rush. But no, it's going to show me... Campaign missions... Can I get a list of their names? This is just Modern Warfare. Fog of War. Piccadilly. Um, I don't think I can get like a. Well, the answer is Halo. Yeah, it's definitely Halo One, in my personal opinion. Yeah, I agree. I don't. I don't have a better answer for that. Me neither. And that's it for the show this week. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Synced Up Podcast. Thank you. Um, once again, right into the show. Follow us on Twitter at Synced Up Pod. Support us on Patreon for a dollar, five dollars, any amount of dollars. It doesn't matter. If you do support us on Patreon for five dollars, you do get access to the post show that we're about to do, where we're going to talk about right stuff. After. Right after this. So if you do pay that $5 a month, we'll see you in a minute. Everyone else, we will see you tomorrow or next week. Goodbye. Goodbye.